Hello everyone, welcome to Hawkeye Traders. My name is Randy Lindsay, host of today's live presentation. I'm here to educate and inform you on the proper use of Hawkeye on the live edge of the market. If you have any questions or comments during today's presentation, then over on the right hand side of your GoToWebinar control panel is a questions pane. Please enter your questions or comments there. I'll be glad to get to them in the order that they're received. If for some reason I overlook or do not get to your question, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's simply because, due to the number of people in the room, I might have uh, simply missed it. Uh, if you wouldn't be so kind as to repeat your question, if it looks like I missed it, I'll be glad to get to it. If I cannot answer your question during today's presentation, I'll let you know that, and I'll uh, follow up with an email reply if I can find an answer at all. There are just simply some questions you just can't answer, so uh, be that as it may. Make sure that everyone understands and knows that we are here for educational purposes only. Let me pull my disclaimer up here. That uh, Hawkeye Traders is not a registered trading advisor. We do not give trading advice. We cannot give you any solicitation to buy or sell options, stocks, futures, or Forex. We make no representation that any of these will likely achieve future profits or results or any losses that are going to be similar to anything that we show or discuss here in our class. Please use common sense. Past performance does not indictively imply future results. Please get advice from a competent financial advisor before investing any money on any instrument that we may show here today. Um, make sure that you understand that there are risks involved in trading in these markets. We do everything we can to make sure that we represent our products and the risks contained in those. Uh, in today's presentation, uh, we can't make any guarantees that you're going to be able to make uh, or perform as well as we show or do in class today. Uh, everything that we show uh, is done as accurately and as best as we can. Uh, but to make sure that you understand uh, that there are risks involved. There's a large amount of money that can be made in these markets. There's also a large amount that can be lost. So please don't trade with money that you cannot afford to lose and never, ever, 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 ever trade in a live account with real money until you have first proven you can consistently and profitably trade in a simulated trading account. Today's presentation is being recorded it will be made available on the Hawkeye Traders website, HawkeyeTraders.com. If you go there, you can see the website right there, www.HawkeyeTraders.com. If you go under the education panel, training room videos, that's where all the videos will be kept at. You can see right here, the very last web webinar uh, was right here. You have access to that, the last one that was recorded last week was not available because I was uh, on vacation and had technical problems. I could not uh, communicate or uh, transmit from my uh, condo. So um, that's why we didn't have one last week, but I apologize for that. But uh, well, I'm back in here. And if you need any of the previous ones, down here is a list of four of the previous webinars. If you are a Hawkeye member, all of our webinars are on demand and available to you in the members area. So if you go into the members, Hawkeye members area, under the resources tab, all of the webinars are available for you there. Also, if you are currently a Hawkeye member, tomorrow is our first Thursday of the month. We have a special uh, focused training class tomorrow. So make sure that you have signed up, registered for, and are attending tomorrow's live class. because so we're gonna be going over quite a few demonstrations. And we're also going to go over live trade examples, and we're going to go over trade setups and application of the software. And of course, any specific questions and answers that you might have. So if you are already a Hawkeye member, make sure you register for our special members only Thursday training room tomorrow at this same time. You can register for that in the members area. All right, before we get started, I want to make sure and address everybody in the class. Are there any specific questions or comments that I might have missed from the last webinar that I need to carry over into today's discussion? Because I want to show setups. I want to show potential trade entries. I want to show you what I'm specifically looking for on the markets and what Hawkeye specifically shows me and then how to trade those. 
I like to tra trade longer time frames. I like to trade the longer charts, but because of the webinar and the time frames, I have to show examples that are faster in nature, just simply for educational purposes. Because if they were slower, I can show you all the setups, but they're not going to happen in real time. So most of the examples I'm going to show are potentially either scalp trades or intraday trades, but it's to help you to see and understand how the software is used and how they're applied. Okay. Uh, Savino wants to know, why does uh, your uh, virus software block when you try to go to the website? Uh, you're, I'm not sure why, uh, but you make, need to check to see if the uh, settings are turned up too high. If you're trying to download software, our software are executable files. They are EXE files, which inherently do, uh, in the past, have uh, bugs attached to them. So that could be the case. Uh, the software has to be installed into your software, into your computer, so that could be an issue. I'm not sure, uh, but you might have very strict settings on your filter, so I would like you to uh, check that out and see if that might help or not. I um, I don't use um, McAfee, uh, but I, um, I use a, a program that's called ESET, E-S-E-T. Uh, it gives me a really good control. Uh, filters things out, it stays updated, and gives me good access to most of the sites I want to go to. And yes, Christopher, um, ES Focus, absolutely. I've got uh, ES on the uh, TradeStation platform right now. You would like to see it on NinjaTrader? Okay, I'll just shift over to my NinjaTrader platform really quickly. There we go. I do have the S&P 500 set up. This is the uh, index, futures index for the equities. These are the Hawkeye tools. If you're looking at trading this, I'm looking at a 3-minute, a 6-minute, and a 12-minute setup. These are harmonic time frames. At Hawkeye, we believe in multiple time frame, harmonic time frame setups for looking for trades. So when you're looking on a particular time frame, say for example right here, my three minute chart is my primary, then I look at a harmonic of that, which is a multiple of that time frame. So a three to six minute is a multiple two times. Three to 12 minute is a multiple three times. Three to 60 minute is a multiple 15 times. No, it's a multiple 20 times, sorry. 20 times three is 60. So it's all focused on harmonics. So that way it gives me a good heads up on what we're specifically looking for on the trade. Okay. So looking at this S&P 500, we can see that we're looking at the open. We've got some selling coming into the opening, but it looks like we've got some buying coming into the opening as well. Hawkeye has given an initial long signal on the opening bar. You can see right here, there is a double dot buy signal with very strong buying volume. We had strong selling volume coming in, but the selling volume never produced any potential results. So this volume does come in line with the longer term time frame, and it's in line with the overall longer term trend. Okay, but I have a rule that tells me I cannot take any specific trades for the first 15 minutes following the open of the market. So if I'm trading any of the S&P, the NASDAQ, the YM, I, I don't generally will take a trade during the first 15 minutes because I have found that the first 15 minute signals tend to pull back or it tends to be choppy. And so I'll wait for the first 15 minute range to establish itself and then I will go in and look for a potential trade setup once I break out of that 15 minute range. It serves me quite well. Um, and I tend to have some very good trend trades, especially once the 15 minute time frame breakout has occurred. So while we're waiting for that 15 minutes, um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you that the software has given an initial trend entry. You can see that it is a long signal right here that gives you a specific trade. So if you were to take this as a set up, then you can see that the initial trade would have been triggered here. This was the uh, trigger bar and the entry bar right there. 
this these would be your profit targets this would be your initial stop unless you're following the trend so this becomes a continuation trend a continuation entry on an existing trend if you look back to the initial trend point right here just about 720 or so you can see that Hawkeye showed an initial trend entry and trend setup so if you move your your line levels to there then you can see that managing that trade would have given you three five and seven level profit targets having simply just followed the entry rules and managed the trade prior to the open okay but as for now we'll just hold that there and we'll lock that in place and we'll follow that as it comes through I have my chart set up right here let me just go ahead and just blow this up for you that way you can see it a little easier I have my chart set up so that I'm looking at all three time frames on a single chart. So you can see I've got a, I, this is a six minute roadkill. You can see right here that I had that set up as a six minute. I have a six minute roadkill showing me my volume and my, uh, uh, I'm sorry, showing me my trend and my volume. And I'm also looking at my six minute heat map right here with my heat map HT. Let me see, I have it set up as a six minute chart. And I'm also looking at my 12 minute volume right here with another road kill that I have loaded onto the chart. And I'm looking at a 12 minute time frame. So you can see that I have all three time frames on a single chart. So I can, at any point, I can look at the alignment of the time frames and see that my conditions for entry have been met and qualified for the entry of the trade. I do have a, a filter that I establish on this particular trade in that if even if I do get a signal on the initial open, I can't enter any new trades during the first 15 minutes of the market open. And that's because there's a high probability that the trade can enter into a, an extended period of chop or congestion usually around the open and the, and then I can I can't so that I can't trade that so if I were to pull this back down you can see a six minute and 12 minute are all represented right here on this one three minute chart Yeah, um, it's nice to be able to see simple setups. That's that's because I, I have everything on one chart, but I like to keep all of my other charts open because it gives me a better perspective. I can sit back in my chair. I can look at the charts. I see the main trade chart that I've got, but I've got the other charts there as a reference to show me that I am in trend on all of my time frames. So when I see a pullback or consolidation and then a re return to the trend, I will generally have a higher probability that that trade will continue in that direction. Now this trend is a fairly long trend, as you can see from a 12 minute that this longer term trade started at the open of the uh, London session. You can see some uh, concerted buying came in. You can see the trend started back then. So uh, even, even on the hourly, you can see that it's a, a breakout consolidation and continuation. So um, taking trades later in the trend uh, will not have the same bang for the buck, if I might say, uh, that taking it at the beginning of the trade. So take it with a grain of salt that if you enter a trade longer into an existing trend you still have a good chance of profit but the probability of the bigger runs um, goes down the, the later that you enter into the trend if you follow the six ways the market moves which we teach in our uh, class and as you have available to you on demand in the members area and uh, uh, on the uh, video on demand videos then you'll see that we, we can stay with the trend for as long as the trend is with us. We understand where congestion entrance enters. We understand how to read trend, trend pause, or trend continuation. And so we understand from that 
very quickly that we can see and know how to take a trade, how to hold the trade, and how to manage that trade. Yeah, these uh, these symbols don't seem to be updating for something. I was trying something new here. If you look at the uh, the indicators, I loaded them, I preloaded them uh, with fixed symbols, but it looks like these uh, only are good for historical data. They don't look like they update in real time, so I'm going to have to probably change that and uh, and pull those into the actual real contract. So I'll have to do that later. I will have to do that later. Right now, you can see that there is bullish sentiment. Um, I don't know if everybody, there's, there's a lot of uh, bullishness in the markets overall. If you look at the longer time frames, you can see that the, uh, the trend has gone out of consolidation. You can see that there's been one, two, three, four days of consolidation. You have a push through, pullback, correction and then now another punch through and continuation so it looks good uh, for this trend to be continuing I don't see any reason for it to not continue so the S&P 500 if you're looking at the NASDAQ or the YM let's pull the NASDAQ up really quick and see what it's doing you can see NASDAQ hasn't started off equally uh, at all you can see it's pushing the new highs but it's just not getting the strength that it needs to push through you see that there's some weakness here, so I would I would expect to see uh, the fat boy uh, to be uh, pretty decorrelated. It looks like on this one is decorrelated, but I need to change the symbols. Uh, I'm just going to do that now, real quick while we're waiting. I think bonds are still on March. Yeah. Let me apply that. Yeah, that looks much better. I don't know why using the continuous contract symbols for some reason don't update like they should, but um, I get a lot. I get all the historical data, but I just don't get the live data. So I just wanted to make sure I got that in and updated properly. That looks good. So you can see there is a, quite a bit of decorrelation in this market. Notice how the weakness of the NASDAQ right here relative to the S&P, relative to the Dow. Okay, so that shows me there's a, there's probably going to be some choppy trading on the initial open. So there, again, that is another filter that I like to use that if I'm looking at taking a trade, the other markets tend to trend well if they are correlated. If they are decorrelated, which the fat boy is showing me right now, then I'll stay out of the trade as well. Okay, so that's one way, one thing to consider and to look at. So also looking at the the, the YM, you can see there's a lot of strength in the YM. You can see both the YM and the ES are, are continuing to trend uh, long. Um, however, um, the Nasdaq is is not. The YM, the Dow Jones, is definitely pushing and leading this charge, it looks like, and is continuing a really nice strong trend from the uh, London Open this morning. Consolidation trend and con continuation of uh, that same expansion. You can see the exact same signal was given also on the Open here uh, on the NASDAQ as well. I mean on the, the YM, but not as early. You can see this weakness, and then it came back in strong. And we've got a nice strength bar there. So you can see the continuation and build up there. So let's go back to the S&P. Let's put that uh, contract back on there. Lock it in place and then just see how this trade continues out. And we'll follow it through. We're going to continue to manage this trade as if we had entered right here on this initial opening bar. And then we'll show you how the level rules are applied to the trade as it develops and how we're going to read the trend and follow that through. Notice how the price is coming right back 
to our trend dots. Okay. Understanding the six ways the market moves, we understand and know that that is a trend run. We are waiting for the dots to close. Okay. We are looking for price to close below the trend dot in order to for us to be able to see like like it did right there. See the close below the trend dot, then the trend dot started to go flat and roll over. See how they're nice and spaced and then they start scrunching up and rolling over, getting flat. And then price breaks back out above them. We look back to the pivots. We look at a consolidation channel. And then we look for a break of that consolidation channel and reestablishment of a trend run. And we are still doing that. Price came back down hit but never closed below. So we were never even considering exiting this trade because we were focused on how the trade is progressing and how it's moving along. Christopher, can I explain the colored ribbon at the bottom? Um, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Um, is it on the 60-minute chart? Is it the three-minute chart at the bottom of this chart? Or is it the fat boy here? Which colored ribbon are you referring to? On the 60 minute, these bars right here, these are the Hawkeye zones right here. Look at the zone setting. I'll turn them on and off there and show you that that's what they are. Hawkeye zones, okay, those are supply and demand zones that are active and that they display in real time and they're color coded. They change colors based upon the interaction of price with. Uh, the bars and so you can see that the initial colors will come in as a light blue uh, but then they change color based upon the number of times that price interacts with that price level so it shows you strength and uh, weakness correspondingly and uh, the placement of those specific areas uh, demand zones are color coded with green numbers supply zones are color coded with red on nice established long trends you will have a series of demand zones and uh, no uh, presence of supply zones, especially if you're in regions of uh, brand new highs, which we have right here. The, if you're referring to this, then this is the Hawkeye heat map. The heat map shows the, the strength of the trend. So this correlates with the actual trend itself. So you can see that there is a strong upward trend strength here, but it isn't until this consolidation breaks down that the trend strength weakens. But then you can see that that downtrend is strengthening towards a more of an uptrend and then becomes strong as the trend breaks out. So this is basically a measure of momentum, or we refer to it as a, like a heat map uh, to show trend strength. It is part of our three-step entry method, and we are looking for that trend strength to be shown across all of the time frames in order for us to enter. Tom, instead of using time charts, could Hawkeye be used on tick or range bars? Absolutely. No problems whatsoever on time or range bars or tick charts. No problem. Let me show you to, the same setup over on tick charts already have it set up on this other setup here. Here you can see I do have a uh, the S&P 500. I'm looking at day only data. So that gives me a measure of the gap from the overnight. And uh, you can see that I have them set to tick charts. This is a 1394 tick. You say 1394 tick. What are you using a 1394 tick. It's because we have a tool that's called a Hawkeye gearbox. The gearbox is our speed shifter. It, uh, it sh calculates the optimal tick speeds for any specific market and setup. So it tells me every day the speeds that I need to set my tick charts to. You can see that over time tick speeds change and they change quite a bit. The speed of the market changes because the volatility, the volume in the market comes and goes. It, it breathes. 
And so we've developed an indicator that also breathes the speed of your charts with the market and helps you to identify a, a very good stable tick setting that can be applied to your charts and used on a daily basis. So here are those same tick settings where you're looking at the trend volume and momentum across three different time frames. And I have this set up as a two times the time frame, which is a tick chart setting times two. So I multiply that by two, which will give me my second time frame. And then my second time frame goes to my third time frame. So that's how I have those set up. So Tom, I hope that helps. And absolutely, you can do it on range bars, uh, time bars, and so forth. On uh, MT4, uh, MT4 does not have tick or range bar capabilities. So everything that's done on MT4 will be based upon time charts. That's correct. So the same indicators are applied to the Forex market. They're just applied uh, on time charts using MT4. Okay, you can see that we're just starting to break that 15 minute range. Okay, we are outside of the 15 minutes, but we are consolidated. Notice that the price stayed within that first opening 15 minute range here. You see that? I have it drawn on my yellow chart to show that, but it looks like we are breaking. So there, that gives you the first break of the range, the consolidation range. If you look back at our three minute chart, you can see that the initial opening that we had at this point here, okay, we're continuing to follow that with risk and breakout, okay? So as you're following the trade and you're looking at the setup, then you can see that the initial risk in the trade is the same as the levels of profit that you're looking at taking. So if you're looking at taking this much risk, then each level of profit should be proportional. So this basically will give you a one-to-one -one a two to one or a three to one risk reward ratio for um, uh, application and profit taking. So having initially entered here based upon the uh, roadkill settings, then you can see that this gives you a one, two or three to one reward risk ratio setting for that. Very simple, very easy to apply and to see on your charts. As you get a close above level one or level two, then you want to keep your stop at least two levels away from where the current price is. Because you're within uh, the first 15 minutes or if you have any news coming up, then you always want to make sure if you have established good profit in the market at the very beginning, make sure you take some of that profit off the table before you have any more risk because you're always trying to manage risk in your trade. This is, we're not here to try to make money, although a lot of people will think that. We are here to manage risk. By managing risk, the money just kind of comes along as kind of like a fringe benefit. But if you're managing risk and you're trading probabilities, then you're going to be in the proper mindset and you're going to be looking at trading as a business and as a uh, exercise of uh, your trading plan rather than I'm just trying to make money. If that's your goal, then you probably aren't going to do very well, I venture to say. So uh, this was the S&P 500 looking at tick settings. Uh, the crude oil can also be set up and traded uh, using tick charts. Any market can be applied and tick charts can be applied to the charts and you can use those. Even the Forex market, uh, you can apply the exact same tick or range bars to Forex markets and trade Hawkeye rules and methodology using these exact same rule sets. So you, you don't have to be worried about that. All right, looks like we have hit level two. So if you're taking two to one risk reward, then you've got a second level profit. Move your stop from a stop level up to break even at that point. If you're waiting for a level three to be hit, if you're waiting for your level three to be hit, still move your stop up here to break even. Let me put a 
let me put one on here just to uh, to do that here. I'll make this one uh, red. That's going to be our stop level. So what I what I did we we initially started right there. And I'll call call that one green because that will be. There we go. Out there. Let me just get rid of that one. So we'll call that one uh, where we're looking at trying to take profit at. And this one is our stop. So initially, you start the trade off with your stop at a specific distance. Either the Hawkeye stop, or if you're looking at risk reward values, move your stop either from the, the stop level or to the value that you're looking at risking. If you're only risking this much in a trade, then your profit targets are going to be a ratio of that. Then you make sure that you keep your stop at that level. If you're looking at just following the entire trend, then you would keep your stop at the Hawkeye crash barrier and then move it as the price continues to move up. But right now we're following the uh, Hawkeye levels, the level rules. And so we initially start this off at level uh, at the stop level. When we hit level two, we move our stop to a level zero to break even. I like to always do it with plus one tick, okay? Just to make sure that I'm in a no loss situation. My initial profit target is at a level three. So by having a, a profit target at a level three, that gives me three to one risk reward on a profit take which greatly increases my odds uh, on, on trading uh, and puts probability on my side. There it goes. So by hitting that and trading that, then that automatically gives me three uh, levels of profit for every level of risk that I had in the trade. If I had one contract, I'm done with the trade. If I have two contracts, I take one contract off at level three. My second contract stop is at here also at level one now. Now that I've taken level three, two levels down is level one. So I'm going to move my stop up to a level one, minus one tick, just in case. It comes down, touches, but not. And uh, there's the, the setup. If I have more than two contracts, say, for example, five, which is what I normally trade, uh, then you will take, I usually take two contracts off at the first touch of a level three. I will take two contracts off at touch of level five, and I will have my last contract as a runner, and I will allow that runner to follow the level rules or the Hawkeye crash barrier, whichever is closer to price. And those are the standard rules to follow. Those are standard level rules, absolutely. Mark, what was the actual profit dollar amount on that level three? Okay, well, if you're looking at actual dollar amounts, then you look at the, the value of the price. The entry point was a 23, I can't see, let me, 82, yeah, 23.82.50 entry point. Okay, so a 23.82 to a 23.87.50 is a five point profit target. For one contract, each, each, each point is $50. That's $250 per contract for level three. And that means that you're risking $50. Three, is, uh, is that right? I have to look at that again. I'm, I, I just, I normally do percentages. I'm not, uh, 82, 82, 50, 84. It looks like about a point and a half almost. So this is a this is a straight five point level, yeah. That's right, five points, fifty dollars, two hundred fifty dollars profit per contract. So uh, profit taken. Next profit target is moved to level five. 
Stop was raised to a level one. That's that. That's this acts as a crash barrier because we're waiting for this to start rising back up. So this is a great method to lock in profit, to scale up loss, to make sure that you don't give up anything that you already taken in the trade. Because here, I I've taken three. I I'm going to guarantee the other three contracts are level one, and I'll continue to hold this until I get knocked out. And notice the trend dots are continuing to rise. Notice that price still is coming back to the trend dots, but only showing that they're not breaking through that. So this still continues to show me that this is a nice trend run, and I'll continue to hold that. Now, price is getting away from the trend dots. It's starting to expand out. So anytime it does that, you always expect price can, it will come back down like a rubber band and retest that. But until it starts breaking or coming back through that trend line, I'll continue to stay with the trade. If you have one or, or more contracts in the trade, then you use that to uh, follow the trade as it progresses. Looking at the fat boy, uh, the NASDAQ is accelerating back up in line because the Dow Jones and the S&P both are, are becoming overbought now and they're starting to uh, trend together. But that NASDAQ became quite oversold and is starting to come back with strength. So if we were to go back and look at the NASDAQ or any of the markets, for example, you can see from the uh, uh, market analyzer that the uh, overall strength of the indices are very strong. You can see the S&P is, is one of the strongest. Okay, the YM ex also exceptionally strong. The NASDAQ now is just only two trend dots into a long trend, but it itself also is very long and strong. Most of the currencies uh, futures are all strong. And you can also see that a lot of the uh, um, commodities are also tending to be strong. There's some weaknesses, natural gas, uh, crude oils flattening out, not really trending. Uh, gold has just gone into a long trend, but it's starting to show weakness because the volume is showing uh, some selling. So we could be consolidating in gold. But the nice thing about the market analyzer is it shows you all of the markets at a glance and you can just sit and change to one specifically. And uh, let's, let's look at that NASDAQ to see it's uh, two dot there and to see that it's um, it currently is coming back with strength. It tried to go down, it stabilized, it failed, and then volume started coming back in very, very strong, pulling it back in. So we expected that when we saw the NASDAQ, I mean the Dow and the S&P continuing to trend with strength, that that discontinuity, that decorrelation showed us there was a great uh, trade setup coming in the NASDAQ for the rally because they typically do tend to trend together. In the trade. Generally, uh, Mark, that's a very good question. He, his question is, uh, do I set the fat boy to correlate with the time frame of the chart that I'm trading? Uh, no, that I don't. I normally, and I didn't do that this morning, I just didn't think of it, uh, but I normally set my fat boy to one minute for the first 45 minutes of the trading day. And then I will set it to three minutes for the remainder of the day regardless of the chart time frame that I'm trading. And that just gives me a good feel for the, the trend overbought, oversold, and correlation values of the instruments I'm looking at. The particular instruments I'm looking at here are the S&P, the NASDAQ, gold, Dow Jones, the bonds, and crude oil. And right now it's set to a three minute. Although usually the first 45 minutes, I do set these to one minute and then I will change to three minutes. So let's go back to the uh, S&P. Continue to set that back up in. Uh, 930 initial trade was there. Looks like we are stuck right at that level. We are consolidating. Notice how the trend dots and the stops are all rising again, coming back up. Price always does that. It tends to rise, plateau, consolidate, rise, plateau, 
So it looks like it's in a nice stair-stepping pattern right now, which it could do this all day long. Um, if you understand six ways the market moves and understand price action, then you can see that that is a very, very normal behavior for price to do. We're not worried about consolidation. We understand uh, the stops will hold you in, but we have specific levels that help us to keep profit and to continue to move as the price continues to move up. The software is designed to help you to see that very easily and to do that. If you don't get the initial trade set up, you can see right here is another entry point where you've got alignment across multiple time frames. So I call these double dot alignments, that these are great places to re-enter existing trends if you happen to have missed any of the previous entry points. Now generally, the first three trend signals of an initial trend, here's the initial start of the trend, that the first three, one, Mm, that's 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 one there as well, but it's not a lot as aligned. This is the second, and then this would be the third. This is where they're both exactly aligned. I look for the perpendicular alignment as being a measure of the strength. Uh, when you don't see them aligned perpendicularly, then you can see that it generally doesn't go as strong as quickly. But when you can see they're aligned across both time frames, you generally will have pretty good responsive price action. And I like to see responsive price action when I'm in a trade. I don't like to get into a trade and then have to sit around and wait for it to hold me hostage while I'm waiting for the trade to develop. I like to watch the trade develop, and I like to feel the trade develop underneath me as I'm in the trade. And I get that responsiveness from that, that alignment, the perpendicular alignment of the roadkill. The KISS is showing that you've got a lot of expansion and strength in this market, uh, but it's flattening out. So the strength that came in the overnight uh, is still there. You've got a greater than two to one uh, advancing issues over declining issues in the market. So that's a good indication. But you can see that the overall market itself is still, the volatility is expanding. So that's those are not in agreement. I want to see volatility contracting. I want it to be going down if the market's going up. Let me make sure that that's even redrawing itself. Let me... Uh... So it looks like it's still stuck on yesterday, though. I don't know why. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. I don't know. For some reason, it just... Uh... Time frame. That's weird. It's not updating for some reason. I gotta check my data. I, I expect to see the volatility going down if I'm seeing price action going up and moving in that direction. The Dow's starting to curve over. The S&P still looks like it's strong, but it's starting to curve over. So you can see they're decorrelating as well. So that tells me that we might be here uh, consolidating for a little bit. Um, in order to in order for this to continue on but I'm not going anywhere I can see weakness is coming in also the uh, um, market analyzer is showing me that the mid cap and the Nasdaq are both showing weakness in the volume trend that the S&P and the YM are, are though though are both strong across the board so with the volume shows you uh, really ahead of time what's going on with the overall price action but I don't see any signs of this trend stopping right now, so I'm still going to continue to hold the trend, allowing my stops to be moved up as this trade progresses out. And notice how the Hawkeye stops have now come back to break even. So even if you were holding this for the duration of the trend, you're already at a break even point and you have a no loss setup on this trade. But we'll continue to wait and watch this. If this price continues up and breaks through level four, then I will continue to move my stop up based upon the level rules and always stay two levels behind. So I will move it up to a level two if I get a hit of level four. Marcel. 
Can you show how your technical indicators are set up on the three minute chart? Okay, I'll do that really quickly. The, uh, I have the trend and stops. Also on the price bars, you, you can see that I have the um, volume paint bar, I have the pivot, and I have the wide bar. So those are the indicators that are set up on my price chart. The, below, I have a six minute roadkill that shows me the trend and volume of my six minute chart. I have a six minute heat map, which is a simple replication of this heat map, but it's on my three minute chart. I have a 12 minute roadkill, which I have uh, not displayed my trend, but I'm only looking at the volume of my 12 minutes. So I'm looking at this volume replicated on my three minute chart, and I'm keeping these volume signals of the roadkill setup so that when the volume aligns here, it shows me with the signal that it's aligned on my three minute chart. And on the bottom, I just simply have the three minute volume and the three minute heat map. And of course, here's the, uh, the Hawkeye levels to show me the profit targets and the level rules that I follow uh, following that. The setups, again, this is a six minute. So I have my road kill set up with a six minute time frame, both set to conservative. My trend speed is conservative and my road kill slow speed is set to conservative. And then I have all the trend and volume signals turned on. The second road kill is a 12 minute, but I have my trend turned off. Heat map HT, that's the six minute. I have a six minute heat map set up. And then the all the other tools are shown right there. Hi, Magnus. Uh, let me see. Uh, nope, Sven is not here. Magnus, he's not in the room right now. What does conservative mean? Okay, there are three trend speeds that are available. Uh, conservative, normal, and aggressive. So if you were to format any of the indicators, then you can see uh, the, the values that are available are conservative, normal, and aggressive. Um, they mean uh, the conservative says that the price and stops are going to stay a certain distance away from the uh, trend dot. So the distance is based upon average true range and standard deviation. So we're looking at at least 2.2 ATRs of distance if you're in a conservative mode. If you're in normal mode, then you're going to be at a one, I think it's 1.75 ATRs away. So this will be closer. And then if you're at aggressive, it's going to be a 1.25 ATR. So the price stop will be a lot closer than if you are on a conservative. So the conservative pulls the stops out farther to allow price to breathe more. Aggressive will pull the stops closer to price, which will lock in more profit, but it also will stop you out quicker. It will also get you into trades quicker, but it will also get you out of trades quicker. If you want to stay with the trend, um, our recommendation is to stay with the conservative trends. And that's what I do. I keep all of mine set to conservative. But if you like to go a little more aggressive, then you can set those in. Mark, uh, could you place the three minute first and the six minute underneath it and the 12 minute last? Absolutely. All you have to do is just to rearrange them. So if I wanted to just drag and drop these anywhere on the charts, I could do that. I like to have my roadkill signals up top because it's easier for me to see the alignment of the tr the dots. Uh, but if you wanted to put your um, tools, like for example, the heat map, this is the three minute. If you want to put the three minute heat map up here on top, you can do that. If you want to put your, your roadkill 
at the very bottom, you can do that. You can rearrange them anywhere that you like. There's no set rule that says they have to be where I have them right now. You can set it anywhere that you like. I just particularly like to have it set up this way because it's easier for me to see when the trend dots align. All right, looks like we just touched level four. Now you can do a touch of level four or close above level four, it's your call. At this point, you would not have been filled at a level four, but you can use that to uh, move your stop up to a level two to lock in yet one more ATR of profit based upon that trade and just allow the trade to continue to push up as you're moving your stop. Now, if the Hawkeye stop gets greater than the current stop level, then you make sure and you set it on the Hawkeye stop rather than the level stop. Because if, if it gets greater than, then you always want to have the stop that is closest to price. And that's the stop you want to hold to. So you continue to manage your trade based upon entry point and follow that using your level rules. And you don't enter the trade until you have confirmed entry rules that have been established. So it's very simple to follow once you understand the rules. It's very easy to see. It's very easy to enter. It's very easy to manage. And you don't have the stress of, oh, no, it's going to go against me. Or you don't have to worry that you're hoping a trade is going to go one way or the other. You already know when you're entering or when you're exiting even before you ever get the trade on. You always, all that's already known ahead of time. So it gets you out of your head and it gets you into the game of trading probabilities and risk. You don't have to worry about fear, greed, emotions interfering. Hello, Jake. Uh, the trade entry, got, we got a signal off the uh, after the initial entry point. We were looking at monitoring this trade from the double dot roadkill setting right here. So the initial trade came in at the 2362.50 point. And uh, since then, we've been monitoring during that, showing how the initial stop setting and how we've managed our, our trade stop and our profit take as the trade progressed. So I hope that helps. This is just on the S&P 500, um, although you could do the exact same thing on the YM and the NASDAQ if you're following those as well. I have a chart set up that I have all four of them set up on it, and I usually trade those. And it's a very easy way to manage four charts all at the same time. Same rules, so there's a, there's no risk added. You're using the same management. Christopher asked, "How do you handle choppy periods?" All right, um, choppy periods are aren't any different from other ones. Uh, you you understand the six ways a market moves. You know you cannot enter a trade if you're in the middle of a chop or if you're in the middle of a consolidation region. So, number one. You don't trade chop. Uh, number two, if you get a signal, if you happen to get a signal when the trade is still in chop, you still don't enter because you understand the six ways the market moves. You understand that you can't enter during chop. If you're a scalp trader and you're looking at trading the chop channel, that's a totally different strategy. But if you're looking at trading trends, then you know that you can't enter in that. So it's very easy to identify and to know whether you're in a choppy market or not. Uh, by understanding price action and volume and the six ways the market moves. If you become Hawkeye trader, then if you look in the members area, we have teachings, uh, on-demand video, and handouts that show you and help you to understand the six ways the market moves. 
If you're brand new to Hawkeye and you want to get up to speed really quickly, then come to Charlotte uh, in April uh, to our four-day intensive training. We're going to be going through eight hours every single day, four straight days of intensive Hawkeye training. All the indicators, all the methods, the three-step entry and exit method, understanding the six ways the market moves will be grilled into your head. You'll walk away from that with the confidence that I've got right now that I can look at the market and see if I'm in congestion, if it's a trend pause, if I know the breakout point, when I'm ex entering, when I'm exiting. And having just the, the, the ability to sit back and just monitor a trade without fear or greed coming in and trying to uh, circumvent you and get you out of that trade. So if you're interested, um, then uh, c go to the website, uh, HawkeyeTraders.com, for more information on the seminar or uh, to get your seat. Um, we still have room in the seminar, uh, so I um, encourage you to uh, come. I'm limiting the seminar only to 25 people, period, because I like to keep it small. I like to keep uh, it manageable, and I want to make sure I give plenty of time to all of those who attend. Do I find the ES starts to retrend after the DAX? I'm I don't really follow the DAX, so I'm not sure. Um, but uh, I know that uh, quite a few Hawkeye traders trade the DAX uh, with great success, only, and uh, they they look at the uh, the DAX relative to the S and P. So it could, uh, but I can't really answer that question directly. Sorry about that. Marcel, are your road kills set to conservative or aggressive? Your alerts look different. Okay, um, yeah, it depends on the what you have displayed. And uh, also, there's a little difference between the platforms. So, Marcel, if you're on Ninja or TradeStation, they'll look a little bit different. Or even if you're on MT4, um, they will look slightly different because of the date feed. Um, but in this particular case, I do have everything set to conservative. Um, and I also have all of my volume signals turned on in this case. So if you if I were to format this and go to the roadkill, you can see that I have my trend on, my trend entry on. I have all of my roadkill settings turned on. So I can have my roadkill setups and entries there. But uh, on this particular one, I have my trend turned off. But all the rest of the signals are turned on. If you get uh, signals on top of each other, then they will look a little bit different. I have all of mine the same size, but you can uh, change the size of them so that they're a little bit different. These are these normally should be smaller, but they kind of overwrite each other. Uh, what are the entry rules? Okay, the entry rules are such are this. We are looking for multiple time frame alignment of our signals. So looking at the three minute, the six minute, and the 12 minute, we're looking for a green trend dot to align with a green volume to align with a bright green heat map. That's phase one. Step two, we need to see that the second time frame volume right here and heat map or momentum are in agreement with that trend direction. So I need green volume and at least a weakness shown in my heat map. So a dark red, dark green, or bright green heat map on the second time frame. Then on the third time frame, I need to see that my third time frame volume is green. I don't look at the heat map or anything else. I was just looking at the volume of my third time frame chart. Volume across all the time frames have to be in agreement and show strong buying volume. The bar itself has to be a strong bar, which means the close is greater than the open and then the upper third of the price bar. So we have a strong bar closing with all alignment across all time frames that gives us our entry condition. We have 100% entry criteria to take this as our initial entry. You can see that aligned across the other bars as well. Here you can see alignment across all the time frames, 
and you can see uh, at that point you get you have a nice strong bar giving you clear confirmation of entry. Um, here's another one right here with alignment here. You can see that there's a clear confirmation of alignment across all time frames and a strong bar. Notice that this alignment came, this didn't come in because this was a weak bar. This was a weak bar, and that was a weak bar. So you can see the entry signal didn't trigger on weak bar, but it did trigger on a strong bar. So Hawkeye gives you a tool set that shows you not only price alignment, but volume integration with the tool uh, as the tool um, as the trend progresses. So you can see multiple entry points. All right here is another alignment uh, where you have a nice strong bar set up and consolidation of price in the direction of the trade. After it aligns, uh, you are entering on a market order. Yes, you can you can enter multiple uh, market orders if you wanted, or you can have a limit order based upon the close of the trigger bar. So if this particular bar is your trigger bar, then it closes, it triggers the trade. You enter anywhere on the current bar. You can enter at the open, the high, the low, the close, or anywhere in between. So this becomes your trigger bar, this becomes your entry bar. Let me blow that up for you just so you can see that. So that center bar becomes your entry bar. So you can enter on a market order that will fill you uh, whatever the market price is at that point, or you can put your limit order in, stop limit or limit order, stop market. Uh, so that price guarantees you get filled at a specific level. Uh, limit prices on fast-moving markets sometimes will not be filled, so you always take that risk. Uh, market orders generally will give you a sloppy fill. You'll usually get really bad fills if you take market orders, so it's always a push and pull. Um, you have to make a decision on how you enter a trade and how you're going to be doing that. All right, you're starting to see the kiss wane. Okay, see it's starting to flatten out and roll over now. We're starting to see that the fat boy is showing weakness in the trends now. We're starting to see weakness on the S&P, weakness on the NASDAQ, weakness on the Dow. They're starting to trend all in the same direction. We're starting to see volume weakening as well. So this could be the end of the initial trade push. We can see that the overall price has gone uh, quite a bit ahead of the trend dots. So this does look like a good time for price to start consolidating, pulling back, rechecking it doesn't necessarily mean the trend is over it just means that there is a good chance that price could at this point start trending out so nobody would criticize you for taking profits off the table and then waiting for a new entry or re-entry if that trend doesn't continue but you do have the risk you are running a risk that this potentially could consolidate and then continue to go off without you if it does not give you a re-entry signal. So you've got to make those choices. As a trader, all those choices are always on the table. But your trading plan will always give you the option whether you can enter the trade, exit the trade, or stick that trade out. If you see the fat boy, the kiss, all of your filter tools are confirming that the trade is starting to show weakness then there's nothing wrong with taking all of your profits off the table and then waiting for a new setup. See, this is the first point now we're starting to see prices challenging the trend dots. We're starting to see a close at or below the trend dot. Okay, So this, this does signal that we're either going to be entering into a trend pause because the trend dots are still rising, or we might be actually entering into a congestion entrance if that trend dot paints sideways relative to this price, which it looks like it probably will. But our stops are clearly and firmly set at two ATRs right now. We're waiting for five ATRs to get hit. If we exited right now, we would clearly exit with all of our contracts at three ATRs. No harm, no foul. You're happy. $250 per contract. If you have multiple contracts, that's a great day. Even with one contract, that's still a great day. If you uh, if you go back to the 89 level, 
then that gives you another hundred dollars. That's the, about three hundred fifty dollars per contract if you uh, took a level four. There's no foul in taking profits. Absolutely not. And you did that in what one hour? It's a great day. <laughs> it's a great day. If you guys want to get started with Hawkeye, then uh, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. So let me let me get my uh, my chart up here. I'm pasting a link into the chat window right now. It is HawkeyeTraders.com slash WED Wednesday. If you want to get started with Hawkeye, this is our Hawkeye starter package. Every Wednesday, if you come to my class, then I give you a special uh, to enter in to start looking at trading. Uh, this uh, starter package is a simple uh, tool set that allows you to look at all the tools uh, related to uh, volume. So let me pull that up for you real quick and show you. We're looking at the Hawkeye volume, volume radar, volume paint bar, the pivot, and the wide bar. This is our starter package. It helps you to see the markets. It helps you to understand price relative to volume. And you can apply this to any of the current rules that you already have your trading, whether you're trading with stochastics or MACDs. If you're looking at trade setups, volume supporting any of these signals will give you the confidence to take those trades, understanding and knowing the principles of volume. If you listen to what I'm saying and understand volume with price, then it's going to help you as a trader to become a much more confident trader. So the volume starter package, $97. We normally sell it every day, $360. You can get it today for $97. Go back over out okay it'll take you to this page uh, you'll a uh, very brief summary of what's included what I just showed you that uh, the tools that are included and any of the indicators are supported by these platforms multi charts e signal MetaTrader for ninja trader or trade station All right, uh, about does it for today. Uh, that was a full hour. We got a really nice setup. We've got a trade entry, trade management, uh, several trade exits if, uh, if you followed that through. And I'll even go as far as to say, continue to hold the trade, okay? You can, stick, you can see that we have entered into congestion. The trend dots have gone sideways. The close was under the trend dot. So this is showing that we have entered into a, a consolidation period. So this then becomes our, our, our high. It is a phantom high. Now the first thing we're looking for is a pivot or a phantom low. And that will give us our consolidation range. And once it breaks one side or the other, that will tell us whether we stay with this trade or not. Uh, Jake, does the training seminar come with indicators or do you have to purchase them separate? Yes, you purchase those separately. Uh, the training is, is made specifically for content. There, there are no sales pitches. I'm not going to try to sell you anything at the seminar at all. Only if you ask for it. But the, uh, the seminar is made specifically for people who already own the indicators and want to get up to speed very quickly and apply those to the markets very quickly. Notice the trend of volume is decreasing. Notice the weakness that's coming in at this point. Remember what we were talking about, the overbought and oversold nature of that fat boy? It's showing that. We can see the rounding of the kiss showing that the market is starting to change tenor. So we saw it coming quite a bit of time before this happened, but now price is starting to show that. And you can clearly see the weakness of the volume coming back in. Consolidation. There is our congestion entrance. Now we're waiting for a pivot low or a phantom low to establish the low range. And then this will be our congestion range. This is the chop range. And if it does break out of that one way or the other, then we'll wait for it to uh, confirm. 
So the rest of the day, the way we're going to be looking at it, then we're going to be waiting for this to continue to trend up. The way it's looking right now, it looks like it's just going to be one of those low, slow, long, uh, winding trend days. But if it still does break out, watch for it, because if it breaks below the stop, then you're out of this trade and you're just waiting for new setups. It could even give you a nice reversal bar and maybe we'll even be in a short trade. But we have to see confirmation of the longer time frames first, and that's going to be quite a distance away. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording at this point.